only mode. Happy Saturday, everyone, and welcome to our live Q&A with James Pike. Uh, basically, before we get started with this uh, uh, Q&A session, I want to go over a couple points. Um, first off, everyone who's currently uh, signed into the session, please be aware that you can enter your questions now into the actual question box that you have when you signed in so that we can get your questions um, in an orderly fashion. Um, we ask that you ask only one question at a time so that we can get to, to everyone that, that basically has a question. And as time permits, we'll go back to any additional questions you may have. Um, beyond that, I'm going to now turn this session over to James so I can give you a basic introduction and we'll start taking questions from there. So James, uh, I'm going to hand over control to you. Okay. Uh, hello, um, everybody. This is James, and uh, thanks for coming by. Um, just a brief introduction of myself is um, I'm a concept artist um, working outside, working out of uh, Los Angeles, and um, I currently work on a lot of video games and a little bit of uh, theatrical film work. Um, my background was uh, attended Pasadena Art Center. Uh, College of Design, and uh, where I studied mostly illustration, but had a um, a minor in entertainment design. Um, now the school ha offers a, a great entertainment entertainment design program that's specifically catered just to this type of work. Um, but when I was attending, it was a little bit more of creating your own um, curriculum in a sense, and trying to figure out what are the, some of the best ways to go about it. So after graduating there, I worked briefly for a few years at a advertising company as mostly an illustrator. Um, that experience was great because I got to learn a lot about Photoshop, um, did a lot of different types of, of work for different types of genres, and it was a great learning experience. But the one thing that I felt was lacking was I wasn't being creative and I wasn't really able to um, you know, come up with concepts, you know, new ideas and help drive, um, you know, projects in that sense. So immediately after that, I started working with a small video game company and basically started to develop more skills, you know, got to know the ins and outs of, of uh, creating a video game and things like that. So after that, worked for a couple of other companies, um, one which was NCSoft, where it was a really, really great experience. Um, and then after my stay at NCSOP, decided to work on my own, decided to just become a freelance artist. Uh, it was, you know, always a, I was always really interested in, in trying to be an, a freelance artist and kind of work for myself. So, you know, I had the opportunity to do that. And ever since then, you know, just been working um, in that way. So. It's been really fortunate, and I've got to work on a lot of great projects so far. Um, you know, with a lot of great studios. So, um, yeah, hopefully, you know, we could get some more of these uh, workshops going on as well, and you know, basically just share a lot of my experience and things like that. So, that's pretty much my introduction. Um, I have a slideshow of um, some images that I could kind of just loop. Let me see here. And um, yeah, I'll let you show your slideshow. And again, everyone who's participating, I see all you guys are signed in, but I only have like two questions. So if you have questions, again, please enter them in so that we can get to you as soon as possible. But James, back to you. Okay, so um, let me just try to figure this thing out really quickly. Uh, slideshow. There we go. So uh, a lot of these images that I'm showing right now, they're just basically, um, you know, some some per mostly personal work. Some of them are for studios. And um, let's see. How do I approach your val my my value studies are painted basically the same way as your demo. One of the major things with trying to do any kind of illustration is to have a really, really strong sense of values. 
And it was really important for me to be able to paint very confidently just in black and white. Um, one of my instructors has always told me that if your illustration works in black and white, and you can kind of see some of the black and white images right now on, on the screen, that if they're working out in black and white, then they're going to work out, they're going to look great um, with almost any kind of color scheme. So the first thing you always want to worry about is just basically value studies. And um, I do paint them the same way that I, that, that I did in the demo, but that's been actually developed over a number of years. Um, I used to draw <clears throat> you know, everything on paper, you know, some kind of environment, buildings and streets and people, scan that in and then paint them on screen. Um, after doing that, you know, it did take a lot of time to kind of draw and scan and you know, put it into the computer. So I just started to just paint on the screen instead and kind of bypass the whole drawing aspect of it. So um, a, lot of, a lot of the images that you see, um, some of them were started in black and white, then taken to color. But after enough experience and enough confidence with your values, you could just jump right into color and kind of understand what the value system um, is going to, is going to be like. Okay, James. Um, we actually have a couple questions uh, uh, coming through. So, the first question we have is from Matthew. Um, he asks, "How do you approach your value studies? Um, are they painted basically the same way as your demo?" Um. The way I like to approach my value studies is just to make sure that there's a very strong sense of value control. Now, I can open up Photoshop really quickly. Let's stop this. Open up Photoshop. Here's a small picture of me. You guys can see what I look like. But when I'm, when I'm working in values, the f number one thing that I try to do is make sure that I'm not using 100% black and 100% white. I want to try to use all the values in between. And if I'm using some kind of values, you know, I like to tint my whole page, uh, my whole canvas, you know, a pretty a pretty medium gray. So that way, I'm able to basically pull some of the values lighter and pull them a little bit darker. Um, but what I'm really trying to look for is is for some balance. So I don't want to do something like this where half of my composition is light and half of my composition is dark. You know, I would want to have a better, um, I guess, balance of maybe a third being light and two thirds being darker. That way it creates a little bit more kind of a movement and you could also help uh, draw the eye into looking at different areas. So. When I'm doing my value studies, I like to tint my page about a 50% gray, and then now I'm able to just go a little bit darker, you know, maybe plug in some darks maybe more in the foreground over here, um, even take this lighter bit and draw it a little bit lighter maybe to draw some more attention to that, to that edge. So I'm pretty, you know, that's basically the same way that I was approaching it in the demo but within the demo, I was adding a little bit of color to it and not being so black and white. So, but it's basically the same process. Okay, James, thanks for that answer. Um, our next question is from uh, Jose, I believe. Yes. Uh, Jose asks, do you get reference images for the overall mood and color palette before starting a concept, or do you start from scratch? When I start a project, um, I always try to look at as much reference as possible. And one of the major reasons is because without any reference, you're just drawing out of your head. Um, our, our brain is able to actually re retain a lot of information, but when it comes to smaller details and things, to make, things that make a concept more believable, it's really important to get a lot of reference. Um, I use reference for many, many different things. Sometimes it's for the actual object or a building or some kind of architecture, something very specific like that. Sometimes it's just for overall mood and lighting and, 
And sometimes you can look at a picture and it could be a complete